Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to keep looking at the Zendikar intro decks and we're going to look at Rise of the Vampires, which is a mono black deck, which is, as you can guess from the title, all about zombies. So let's move on, start looking at the cards. So, one of the foil face rares of the deck is um, one of the, it's, the, it's the foil face rare, there's not multiple foil face rares. Oh. Anyway, uh, it's Malakir Blood Witch, and it's super, super good. Um, out of all the um, Zendikar intro uh, deck uh, kind of foil rares, I think this one was definitely the best, because, oh, what are the other ones? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're not as good as Malakir Blood Witch. Um, so three and two black for a 4-4 four, four with flying protection from white. So already, even without its other ability, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, that's pretty well costed, you know? <laughs> um, to be a 4-4 four, four flyer with protection for 5 mana is already pretty good. Um, especially in black at this time, because this is where the we're still at the point in history where like, black creatures generally aren't too good or usually have drawbacks and stuff. Um, so its ability, when Malakir Blood Witch enters the battlefield, each opponent loses life equal to the number of vampires you control and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. So this is kind of like, um, firstly, it's super good because <laughs> um, it at least hits them for one, you know, at least one, uh, because you've got one vampire, which is Malakir Blood Witch. But typically it's going to be more than that. You know, if you get everyone losing at least, you know, two, three from this. Super good. Also, um, this is like kind of old school um, life, like mass life drain. Um, so I guess if this was effect was like written these days, you would, um, all the opponents would lose life and you would only gain that life like kind of once. But this is like where you gain the total life loss, which is how it used to be. And they've sort of subtly shifted away from that recently because obviously it scales much, much better at big multiplayer games. And obviously there's so much focus on commander um, these days in design um, that this effect is just, <laughs> you know, it just gets exponentially better. Um, so yeah, I mean, back in the day, my play group and I used to do like four player games, five player games, and you know, you'd play Malakir Blood Witch, everyone loses like four life, and the person who's played it has not only got their 4-4 four, four flyer down, <laughs> but also has just gained 20 life, which is, you know, which is huge. Um, so yeah, really good rare to include, really, really good. Um, so yeah, really good start. And honestly, part of the reason why um, I bought two of these decks <laughs> like when they came out just to mash them together and have two Malakir Blood Witches because it was so good um, two Vampire Nighthawks which is really really good um, so you know these these smaller decks these 41 card intro decks we've got at the moment um, they're very stingy with um, uh, with multiple copies of Uncommons and I'm really really happy they were not stingy with Vampire Nighthawks they have two of these Vampire Nighthawk I... I'm shocked this was not rare at the time it was printed because this felt so good, like so strong uh, for a black creature at the time. So three mana for two, three, flying, death touch, and lifelink. No drawbacks, apart from maybe being double black. Um, you know, I'd expect this to be, you know, if this was like a 2-1 or a 2-2 two, two with flying and death touch and lifelink, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. That's still pretty good. But it being 2-3, so putting it out of like shock range and stuff, um, yeah. It's really, really good, really good, and uh, again, one of the other reasons why um I got two of this deck to have to have a full playset of Vampire Nighthawk because it's so hard to deal with because it has it has evasion, so even if you can block it, you've got to deal with it. it's got Death Touch, and so you're kind of reluctant to block it even when you can block it, and regardless, it's got Life Link as well. So, like super, super good card. I say I have no. I'm really glad it wasn't made rare, but like it definitely feels like it only felt like it should have been rare. Um, but I'm really happy it wasn't just so there was two of them in this deck and like, oh, it's so it's so good. I love Vampire Nighthawk. Probably one of my favorite cards in the whole game. Um, a lot of good memories associated with this. And this was this was like one of the big money uncommons of the set, just because I think people were just surprised just how good it was. Um, anyway, yeah, <laughs> great card. Um, Gatekeeper of Malakir. Two black for a 2-2, two, two. has kicker for another one black. Um, if it ends the battlefield, if it was kicked, um, target player sacrifices a creature. So for three man, you're getting a 2-2 two, two with an edict effect, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, again, just really, really solid. Um, yeah, the fact you don't have to kick it and it's still okay as a 2-2 two, two, uh, for two with like no drawback again is perfectly fine. But obviously the, the you know, third turn to get the edict to fix is, is really strong. So yeah, again, another really good uncommon to have in here. 
Uh, two Gul'dra's vampires, uh, so a single black mana for a 1-1. Um, as long as an opponent has 10 life or less, um, Gul'dra's vampire gets plus 2, plus 1, so it becomes 3-2, and has Intimidate. Um, so I don't think Intimidate has shown up yet in any of these decks. So, yeah, that was new in M10, and I don't think any card used it, really. So... Up until the Lara block, we've had fear, like the classic fear ability, which is like, I can't be blocked set by black or artifact creatures. No matter no matter what colour the creature is that has Intimidate, it's like only only black creatures and artifact creatures can block it because it's too scary for everyone else. Um, and that got replaced in M10 with uh, Intimidate. And Intimidate being, um, you, you basically have to sh um, share a colour um, or be an artifact creature to be able to block it. Um, which is pretty good, and it means you know you can put you can say put it on green creatures or you know and it has I don't know <laughs> like it's not color locked you know it's not inherently weaker just because you're against um, say a black deck and it's unblockable against everything else. Um, so I intimidate is okay. Um, I do still prefer menace these days. I think that is a better kind of evasive ability based on being scary. But this was okay for a while. Intimidate. Um, <laughs> that was that was the everyone made the joke at the time. So if you oh if you're a five color creature, no one is scared of you, <laughs> which is which is always I thought quite funny. Um, yeah, if you had like I don't know progenitus uh, who had intimidate and just like for a hydra god, not very scary. Anyone can block that anyway. Uh, so yeah, this uh, let's talk about the actual card. So Gul'dra's vampire, um, really really good. You know, it being only uh, you know a one one for one is fine. But late game it gets this um, boost, becoming a three two and getting an evasion ability. When an opponent hits, um, uh, basically hits like what was uh, nicknamed like the bloodied state, which I think was taken from like D and D at the time. There was a mechanic where like if a, um, a creature was at half hit points, they uh, they were called there was it was called bloodied. And uh, this is a minor theme with the vampires. I kind of wish they'd done a bit more with it because um, it's an interesting mechanic to have. Like when an opponent's hit half life, um, they you know they smell blood and they get more. They get more powerful. Um, but this is perfectly fine as it was. And then we have some vampires from M10. So we have two child knights, just two one with lifelink. For two, like perfectly fine. And two vampire aristocrats. Uh two and a black for a two-two. Sacrifice a creature gets plus two, plus two, ten, ten. Again, like perfectly fine. I was really surprised actually. I'm really going off tangent with all these ones, but like I've actually got something to say about these cards and this deck, right? Unlike the last one. Um I was certain Vampire Aristocrat had been like reprinted like a load of times in different core sets, but apparently it only been printed the once, I think, in M in M10, and I think again in like maybe like Conspiracy. Um so yeah, which is which is weird. I thought it'd been printed like a lot more times than that. But anyway, I just I just seem to have like a load of them in my collection, and I don't know why. Um and then some non-vampires, which is a bit of a shame, but it's fine. We need we need a way to kind of curb this deck's power because spoilers. I think it's like the probably the best out of all the Zendikar ones. Um, so we have a single heart stab of mosquito, uh, three and a black for a two two flyer, uh, which is okay in black. Um, it has kicker for two and a black. Uh, when heart stab of mosquito ends the battlefield, it was kicked to destroy target creature. So what seven mana for a two two flyer that also. Uh, destroys a creature when it comes in oh, I suppose it's okay um, I mean there's no restrictions on that destruction uh, it's not like colour locked or anything like that so yeah I guess like for a common it's okay um, and then we have a mindless null um, so this is this is an aggressively bad card um, two and a black for a two two um, it can't block unless you control a vampire so it is worse than what well, like scathe zombies <laughs> <laughs> which is like you know the classic black zombie um i'm i'm there is definitely there's a story that like this was a misprint like it was meant to be one and a black for a two two um and i think it just got like misprinted or something um because yeah there's no reason this should be three mana um but yeah you would cut this anyway because it's you know it has no synergy with vampires and yeah it's just a it's just a two two with a drawback uh, and then two Acolyte of Zathrid from M10. Um, so a single black mana for a naught one, which is not wonderful. I don't know why it couldn't just be a 1-1. One, one. And you can pay one and a black and tap it to make a player lose one life. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, you know, very expensive. And, you know, you've, you've got, you should have better things to do with two mana each turn than do this ability. I suppose, you know, it can tick someone down, get, you know, if they're on low life, this can, you know, it's essentially... I guess if you view it as uh, it's a it's a one one unblockable, um, you have to pay two mana every turn for it to attack or something. If you look at it that way, maybe I don't know. 
Oh, we have a zombie Goliath because we have to have a, another terrible M10 card here as well. Uh, it's just five mana for four three, which is just bad. Even for the time in black, that was just bad. Um, so then we have two Feast of Blood. Uh, this is the third reason I, I got two of these back in the day. Uh, so one in the black. Um, cast Feast of Blood only if you control two or more vampires, uh, which, I mean, you should do. You've got a lot of vampires in here. Uh, destroy type creature, you gain four life. Super good. Uh, uh, yeah, it's sorcery speed, and like, yeah, you've got that small hoop to jump through, but it's not color locked. Um, anything, it's just destroy a creature, no restrictions attached to it, and you get four life as well. So, yeah, pretty pretty good removal spell. Uh, and then we have two vampires bite. Uh, <laughs> this art on vampires bite, I I don't right. I am almost convinced that the art for vampires bite was meant to be like for a creature, um, because of like the way yeah you know, the way it's been drawn. It's putting a lot of focus on like the you know the whole the whole body. Let's put it that way, um, and then I don't know, got cut and be like, oh, we need a buff spell. Um, so, <laughs> I, for no, I, for some reason, I do not understand. Well, I mean, I I know I can probably guess at one of the reasons. Um, rather than focus on like the bitey part, like you could have really zoomed in there just to like um, the uh, the vampire lady's mouth. Um, but no, we'll. <laughs> The the bit that does the biting, we'll put that right at the top of the frame, and in the middle we'll just have well, I mean you can see what we've got. Um so it's just <laughs> just the artwork decision on this is is insane. Anyway, single black. Target creature gets plus three plus naught to then turn, which is actually okay for the time for a black pump spell, just to just just one black for plus three plus naught. Um if it's kicked for two and a black, uh the creature you, you cast on also gets lifelink to turn to turn. So that that kicker is kind of expensive just to give lifelink, uh, because then white's like four mana for plus three plus naught and lifelink, which is a little pricey. But um again, you know, with all these kick spells, like the 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 power is the flexibility there. Like if you do have the mana to do it, then it's fine. Um, but a lot of the time when I used to play this card, it was just uh, just the one black for plus three plus naught. It was, you know, kind of black giant growth, kind of. Anyway. Um, and then the other round of the deck is Blood Tribute. So the fourth reason I bought two of this deck. Um, so four and two black. Um, so it has Kicker, where you can tap an untapped vampire you control, which is barely a cost. Um, target opponent loses half their life rounded up. Which is just really good. Um, if blood tribute, if blood tribute was kicked, you also gain life equal to the life loss this way. So um, yeah, just really really strong card to have. Um, or it definitely felt strong at the time. This uh, this effect is maybe a little overcosted just to make someone lose half their life because obviously it gets weaker as the game goes on. Um, but you know it's always very satisfying because <laughs> uh, we used to uh, someone in our group used to play like a white life gain deck, and it was always very satisfying to cast blood tribute and you know take them down from like sixty life down to thirty with a single spell, and then also gain thirty because you'd all but you'd always pay the kicker on this one, um, if you could. So yeah, good a good other rare to have in the deck, I think. Um, and then a single hideous end, one one and two black, uh destroy type non-black creature it's controlled is two life. Yep, fine. It's it's Doom Blade with an extra bit of life loss. Um a single diabolic tutor to search up whatever you need, probably the Malachia Blood Witch or the Blood Tribute, honestly. Um, a single rise from the grave, uh, just to reanimate stuff, so you can turn your vampires also into zombies. So I wasn't lying at the start, it is about zombies, you can't prove otherwise. And it did have a mindless null, so uh, technically, minor zombie tribal theme. All you at the start are being like, oh, he said zombies, he meant to say vampires. No, I was, I was playing the long game here. Uh, and then two piranha marshes, um, I really like these uh, Zendikar um spell lands essentially when they come in they're very small effect um this is fine comes to play tapped and makes a target and makes a player lose a life yeah it's fine and uh 16 swamps so yeah so it could have been uh so overall i do think the card selection in this deck is pretty good uh the mind of snarl is obviously not ideal the acolyte of zathrid is also not ideal um the these three cards are basically all the other vampire cards that could have gone into the deck um so we could have had bloodseeker Instead of, I know, Acolyte of Zathrid, because that card is honestly garbage. Um, so Bloodseeker, and it's another vampire, which is good. So it's, uh, it's one in the black for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. So it's kind of like um, Evil Soul Warden, I suppose. Um, so yeah, Bloodseeker could have gone in here easily. Uh, vampire Lacerator. Um, it's a 2-2 two, two for one black. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life an opponent, unless an opponent has 10 or less life. So really aggressive first turn play and then start swinging with it. Uh, and alternate rare. 
Blade of the Blood Chief. Um, so I don't know. Definitely not Malachi Blood Witch. That has to stay. Maybe instead of the um, Blood Tribute, maybe instead they could have had this instead. So Blade of the Blood Chief. Um, one mana. Uh, it's an equipment whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on the equipped creature. If the equipped creature is a vampire, put two plus one plus one counters on it instead. So yeah, it's a global death trigger to get plus one plus one counters. It equips for only one, and it's only one. To, it's super good, honestly. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you're playing. Yeah, you know, you've got removal spells. Well, so you're going to be killing creatures. This is gonna. This gets out of control very quickly. Um. So yeah, that's what could have been. Uh, so overall, yeah, this one's really strong. I really like this one. Could you tell? Um, yeah, this is one I bought. I think I might have actually bought three of them in the end, honestly. Um, I think two to get full play sets of Nighthawk and Feast of Blood and all and you know, stuff like that. And I feel like at some point I did buy a third one, but that might have been... I definitely remember buying three of them all at once in the shop. I think maybe because of the thing, the third one I gave to a friend who also wanted it and I was picking up for him. But yes, this is this is definitely the only um, <laughs> pre-con I've bought three times. Uh, so yeah, it's super, super good. I really, really like this one. I think it's really well put together. Um, the vampires in Zendikar were definitely very strong and definitely won out, definitely got some of the better cards in the set, in my opinion. Uh, what did you think after seeing the Rise of the Vampires? Do you have any uh, thoughts on this deck? any comments or stories or opinions um please put a comment below if you do i always like reading those uh but i'll be here next time i'm going to look at another zendikar intro pack but until then thanks for watching and listening have a great day